Hey everyone, welcome to Frame Academy Project 5, Part 2. Uh, this whole project is about using audio and video in your WebXR sites. And in this part, we're going to get into actually playing, pausing, and stopping audio. So in Part 1, you uh, uploaded your assets to your project, and hopefully um, got some, some of your own assets in here in your project, and you've uh, brought them into the asset management system here in this A assets element. Now in this section, um, the first thing we want to do is actually bring the sound component into our scene on an entity. And uh, this component, by the way, the sound component, it's called a core component, so it comes with A-Frame. Uh, you'll find it here in the, uh, the documentation on the left in the sidebar, you'll see sound. So you don't need to import it as a separate script, it's not like an external uh, component that someone else has made. This is sort of part of A-Frame core, so it's called a core component. And if you click on the documentation, you'll actually see a lot about this component. There are lots of properties you can configure, and we're only going to use a few of them, so I actually encourage you to experiment with these. Uh, you can decide whether you want it to be spatial or not, so if it's spatial, you know, it'll sound as if it's coming from a certain direction in the scene, uh, and if it's not spatial, it'll just sound kind of the same volume no matter where you are in the space. So um, that's an important you know, distinction. But uh, for us, first let's simply uh, give an entity the sound component. And it's actually not super important which entity um, has it, but I'm gonna give it to this music panel entity on line uh, 78. Remember, this is the entity that's uh, the parent entity for all of the things in our uh, user interface for playing music. Uh, we've got that play box, the stop box, and the pause box. Um, you saw these from the project from last time, and in the scene they show up like this, right? Um, I've got this my play, stop, and pause. I've got a few other things. All that is in this parent entity music panel, and I'm gonna put the sound component on that. And the only property uh, for now that I need to configure is the source property, which is where you set all right, what is the source uh, of the sound? And the source is uh, this asset we uploaded up here, the audio, we gave it an ID of song. So you can reference it by using uh, the hash and then the ID, song. So here we're just setting uh, the source attribute, giving it a value of uh, hash song so that it references this uh, song, this audio file that we preloaded here in Assets. Okay, so that all is good. Uh, we've given the component to an entity, and now we actually need to write our own component that actually controls the playing, the pausing, and the stopping uh, of, this, uh, of this sound. So let's get to it. The first thing you want to do is make a new JavaScript file. You can do that with new file. I went ahead and gave mine a, uh, a title of public slash js slash uh, audio controls dot js. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so here's my audio controls uh, js file. Now I've already made the component here, so I'm going to walk you through how it's all set up. Now in the beginning though, um, for the starter, uh, there's a component in this in the project called component starter.js and you can this is kind of like the starter code for a component right you can go ahead and copy and paste this into your new javascript file okay and below the video by the way i, I break this down really uh, sort of step by step okay okay uh, so you've got your starter code but instead of the name um, disappear right you give your first one the name uh, song player. Right? This is what this component uh, is gonna do. It's gonna control the playback of that song. Okay, uh, all we have in it is just this init uh, function. This is where you can put code in between these curly braces is where you can put the code that'll run as soon as this component loads up on an entity in your scene. So eventually we'll have to attach it to an entity in our scene and uh, fair enough. Okay, so now we're actually ready to write our functions. And again, you know, a function in JavaScript is a bit of code that does something. It like performs some action, right? It's not just a variable which stores some information. A function actually sort of does something. Okay. So um, the first thing we want to do 
uh, in our component is we need a reference to that entity in our scene that has the sound component on it. And if you remember from project four, there are a few ways that you can uh, reference these entities in your JavaScript. You can use either their ID or their class. For this, because there's just, it's just one element that has a unique ID, we can use uh, its ID. And the way we do that is with um, document.querySelector. All right. Uh, if, you, if we were using class, if we were trying to select a bunch of uh, entities at once, we could use query selector all and then the name of the class. But if it's just an ID, you can just use a simple uh, query selector. I'm giving the whole thing a name of audio source. So I'm saying let audio source equals, we're doing document.querySelector. And then you use the ID of that uh, entity that has the sound component on it. So it's a music panel. So that gives us a reference to that entity that has the sound component on it. That's perfect. And now we're ready to write our function that actually plays uh, the sound. So first, uh, let's, just def let's just give the function a name. I'm going to name it music play. Remember, it's a pretty good practice to name the function in a way that kind of indicates like what it does. In this case, you know, music play. And so you say, you know, let music play equals We've got blank parentheses again, because we don't need anything in here just yet. We'll get to this later. Then your equals and the arrow, and then the curly braces. And it's in this curly braces that you define uh, the code that will run as soon as this function gets called. Right now, we're just defining the function, and then later on, we'll, we'll call it. So what is the code that we put in here right? that will actually cause uh, the audio source uh, to play the uh, sound on it that's on it with the sound component. So I looked in the documentation for the sound component, right? And you know we know that components have properties that you can configure in different ways, right? We've already set the source property. Uh, in other components, we've set uh, other properties. But components sometimes have methods as well. And a method is, it's like a function that comes with the component that is sort of like predefined. Um, just like a property has been sort of predefined for us, all we have to do is put the name of it and uh, the value we want for it. Methods kind of come with uh, components. Not every component has methods, but some do. And this one does. And we see it's got a few methods, pause sound, uh, play sound, and stop sound. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory <laughs> what these do. I want pause, play, or stop. So these are the methods that will, that will do that. And... Um, there's a handy way to uh, access these methods. Okay, so uh, inside of your music play function, what you want is uh, this line of code right here, and I'm going to explain what this does. It's a lot of dots, but uh, it'll all make make good sense. So first, we have audio source, which is as we defined above the reference to that entity in our scene uh, that has the sound component on it. So all good there. And you can use this dot, uh, dot notation to kind of drill down uh, to access different things that are on that, uh, that entity. In this case, we want to drill down to its components. And then we want to drill down further, specifically to the sound component. And then we want to drill down further to access that method. And that's how you do it. Uh, that's how you can access methods on components. You can put uh, the reference to the entity we have up here in this audio source variable dot components dot the name of the component and then dot the method um, followed by some parentheses okay and this code will play that sound okay that is the uh, the sound on the element that we're referencing so not too bad uh, now checking out our component now where I have this already written, right? So we've gone over the uh, referencing the entity in the scene. We've gone over actually accessing the play sound method on the sound component that is on that entity. And then finally, right, we want all this to happen when the user clicks that play button, right? We want it to happen when they click on this play button. So just as we did in project four with the sphere expand, uh, we need a event listener to be listening for that click event. 
Okay, so we're going to do uh, this because eventually I'm going to put this component on uh, this playbox entity. So we want the event listener to go onto this, uh, knowing that we're going to put it right on this. So we've got this dot l to access its element dot uh, add event listener as we've done before. And then with event listeners, right, you've got two things in the parentheses. Uh, the first is the name of the event that you're listening for. We're listening for a click. We've got a comma. And then you've, you can put the name of a function that you want to call as soon as that event is detected. Okay? And uh, we can put our music play function, which we've defined above. Right? So we've got this.l.addEventListener, put the name of the event, and then you put the name of the function that you want to call when that event goes off. Okay, um, now looks good, uh, right? This is all sort of wrapped up, but the two final steps are actually in our HTML. Remember, you actually have to reference, you have to import this script uh, into your HTML. So we do a, a script element inside of your head element. We've got script, and then for the source, you put the file name. I've got public slash JS slash audio controls dot JS. So that brings the JavaScript into our uh, HTML document um, so we can uh, actually use these components and then you actually need to attach this component to an entity in your scene right if we didn't do that then uh, these wouldn't really do anything we, we defined the components but we're not actually we haven't actually put them on an entity so we need to do that to make the code work and if you remember uh, we set uh, this event listener on this so we want to make sure that this component is on uh, the entity that we want users to be able to click on. In this case, I want it on that play box, right? So I've just put song player, which is the name of the component, right? As we named it up here, onto uh, our play box entity on line 84. So there we've got song player. So now that this uh, in the component will refer to uh, this play box, right? This plane, and you can test it out by uh, you know loading it up and walking over here and pressing the play button. Let me test out that, <laughs> that it is indeed working. Yep, I hear it just fine. Okay, nice. And um, you'll see, I've actually set up uh, on in the same JavaScript file. I've made another component called song stopper that is very similar to this component, but instead of this play sound method, I'm calling the stop sound. Instead of naming the function music play, I'm naming it music stop. And then I'm making sure that I put music stop here in the event listener, because that's the name of the function that I want to call. It's not music play anymore. And um, you know, as a quick note, you can actually define as many components as you want in the same uh, JavaScript file. I usually separate them out, but if I have a bunch of components that are related to the same thing, like these are all you know different audio controls, I'll throw them into the same uh, into the same file, um, just because they're really kind of closely related. So you can also try the stop button, right? I, I threw that on the uh, the stop box. You see, I've got the song stopper component on that. That's what I've named uh, this component here. Okay. And what I want you to do for the challenge is to create and use uh, a song pauser component. So it's going to be very similar to these first two, and you can put it right in here uh, if you'd like. But I want you to make a component that controls the pausing uh, of the sound, and I want you to put it in your HTML on this pause box so that in your scene, not only can you play and stop, uh, but you can also pause the audio, which just kind of freezes it in place so that if you hit play again, it'll resume it from where it left off. Um, stop kind of does a full reset. So when you press stop, it, it'll go back to the beginning if you press play. Okay, good luck. Uh, I think you'll find that you can really reuse uh, a lot of this code here. You can do some copying and pasting and then just changing some of the values. Uh, but make sure you understand what's going on. And in case you want all of this code, uh, you will find it at the bottom uh, of the page for this project. You'll see uh, the project with my audio controls component in it uh, that you can copy and paste into your own project or you can uh, just remix it from here if you want. 
Okay, good luck. Uh, let me know how you do and let me know if you have any questions in the online community. See you in the next part.